Hello, this is going to be the tutorial for Isela. So we're gonna have an easy difficulty. The higher difficulty has different wave spawns, bosses has more health and their attacks have some more range or they attack faster too. There are some more changes too to enemies and just let's cover easy. So time starts when we gain control which is when our feed lands on the third or second pixel of that shadow. So, and the first thing you're gonna do when you gain control is dash that because you don't want to waste stamina having full stamina to take advantage of that. Normally, I try to dash up these because you move slower, though I'm not sure if it's gains time because your dash gets shortened when we do so. This enemy here can sometimes get in the way like that, then you have to dash to get out of his way. Get to teleport, teleport here. This teleport, first off, when you get this screen to show up, this is gonna show up for every weapon we pick up. You can't get rid of it except if you attack or do special attack. And if you do special attacks too soon, it won't go away. This is not a problem here, but it's gonna come in in some of the later things. So this refills the stamina for this shot. Also for this thing, you want to always move down before you do the next. So otherwise you risk hitting it. There's an enemy there. You can hit. Okay, let's dash out. Dash up. Teleport to that to save a little stamina. The dash has pick up this. It. You can get rid of that menu by pressing space when you see the two SS. You're not gonna equip it now, we're gonna do that later. If I teleport this high because then we teleport through it. If you do lower, you get stuck on it. The higher you can teleport all the way like that too. Save it a little bit of time, not worth setting up, but yeah. So go over the weapon before we hit that trigger away spawn. This knife has a three hit attack. If you wait too long, you reset it. But yeah, the final hit has more range and deals more damage. And normal enemies can be killed by just the second and third hit, so we can try and time the attacks. So the first attack goes on the before, and then... I was late on the teleport, I didn't get it. I'm gonna wait out that attack too. Yeah, like that, you can pick up those for health. Uh, you should equip the health converter after this fight, and then you can pick up those for health. I missed that right now. So let's try and redo this, this quickly. Or oh, yeah, I can redo this again. So let's see. Missed a quick attack. Like that, much better. And it's safe to pick up because this thing takes this long thing time to become active. And you can just stand and wait as you have a lot of time to equip the health uh, converter. So, but before I trigger it, I'm gonna talk about the uh, skip the boss fight coming up and the out of bounds glitch. So, walls like this has an invisible wall till around this area. It depends, like upward, it's much thicker, it's going all the way up there, and this is very thin on that. But if you have a teleportable object standing, like an enemy, or in some the stationary object standing right next to a wall, if you teleport into it, it's gonna tell it push you into the wall and the game will try to push you through. And it's gonna be an invisible blocking wall there. If we get the boss to stand here, I can aim like that, and if I shoot that teleport and the boss stands there, I would teleport it through the boss and it would push me to that side, skipping the boss fight. Optimally we want to try and get into this area, get the boss that doesn't that has an attack, chase attack, this can't reach us and it's gonna jump and it's that hopefully arrive there if everything goes right. They go back and hit it. Try to push it up and teleport this way down. This is harder. The, you can do a second cycle if you don't get it. We try and go for the second cycle and push the bosses to stand around here. Much easier time doing that. So let's try and show this off. Then now it's more or less good. You can have it better position because it's a bit too far down. Because that means it's very hard to. So that's probably the perfect position for the boss. And I'm, oh, I missed it. You can see it's quite tricky to get this. So this is a route where it would be like that. Is why how you want to clip this. Let's try and show this off again. It's quite tricky to get the boss to stand in the perfect position to push it down. Like this. This is. Oh, I hit him down instead. So, yeah, let's see if it's like that. I can't really teleport to a good way. There you go. I overshot it. It can be very difficult to get this shot when it's like this high.
much easier to do it like this. That's kind of free. So yeah, you get to get get how about how you should do from that. Let's see, try and get the boss to not cooperate, like something like this. If it does that, now you can go for a second circuit. Push it a bit closer, just like that. When it goes, it just go down, and it should jump, and you should be able to push it down. If you do it correct, you can even have the boss. Oh, station itself correctly. Yeah, something like that to skip that boss fight. If I go out and in, the boss won't be here. Yeah, so there. Uh, let's continue on. This way, if best way if you can get this, it's very difficult to get that. It's not really. It's you can't not go for it if you don't want to. It says like. Over the second cycle is only safe like 8 seconds. If you want to fight the boss, it's fine to save the perfect skip saves like 20 seconds over fighting the boss. Okay, let's continue on. But it's teleport over, go in, hit that thing, that forward. If you do it correct, you can hit both of those. You want to kill all three small guys, because that opens the big guy you can ignore. Here's a trigger that spawns a bunch of three of those big guys, you can just walk around it. Trigger this, the trigger is on the center, so you have to be sure you hit the center. There's a glitch, you can trigger this to go down like that and fire a teleport onto a teleportable object up there. Uh oh, yeah. And if you get stuck inside an object, the game generates a lot of speed in the opposite direction. So if you can teleport out that, that means you can walk on this. There's actually floor and get walk out of bounds and skip this, but it doesn't save enough time. But yeah. Okay, you can go through there. Fine. Oh, that was bad. There's an enemy there you could clip through here and skip having to go around, though it's quite difficult. Okay, here's the cleaver to get rid of the screen. You want to switch, we can't switch weapon right now. I have to do a special attack with it to get out of it. But yeah, for the cleaver. The cleaver has one hit, deals a lot of damage, low range and low speed. On it, but it has the highest DPS, so we want to try and use this for bosses. But it can be difficult to use on some bosses effectively, and oftentimes you're better off using the sword or the dagger if you don't feel that you can be sure to get all hits with this. But for the special attack, you can charge it up and fire this thing. That if it hits an enemy, they get stuck inside it and get stunned, can't attack you. They also take no knockback, which is important for one of the enemies for coming up. Additionally, if you hit a wall, it just stops. You can do short spits too. Let's continue on here. We're gonna pick up a damage boost thing. So when you see the two S's, cancel it. Wait for that thing to start attack and dash through him. Teleport to that. Push that block to the side. If you push it forward, you can push it inside this and it can get in the way for the battle. Okay, here you can equip the sword sharpener before the fight, or you can hit this, equip it, and quickly before the fight starts again or try to tend to do it after. I don't think that's the best way. Actually, I think it's better to equip it before, but yeah, I prefer this. So, do the special attack and then hit it. I switch to dagger because it's easier to control. Same thing. Oh, that was bad. Oh, I had the wrong weapon equipped. Misclicked, so let's do this again. Don't mess up. Part. Oops, that was was not supposed to do that. That was glitchy. Now I want to have enough. Now we see why I want to hit with uh, stuck them inside this cleaver attack because otherwise they take way too much knockback. One for a time and let's hope I get a good one. This isn't difficult either. Something like that, then you can quickly equip the sword sharpener if you're like me, or you have already equipped it before, in which case this battle should be fast. You can get extra help by picking up that heat. I haven't really gone over the heat meter, so whenever you hit this, you get heat. This fills up and this trigger these trinkets. This refills our health and this boosts our damage, doubles our damage. You can stack this multiple times if you fill up the heat quickly again to get even more damage. So yeah. And we're gonna try use that damage boost as much as possible to make fights as fast as possible. So it makes battles quite interesting and tactical in decisions. Dash up, if you do it correct, you can hit box there. This room has a very annoying circuit because you never really know where these two things are. In last this case, they were very nice, I just did it badly. Sometimes they're kinda 
stuck in this position when going and you need four dashes to get through the mole and you don't have that really with this mean yeah for the sword wait until you see this fully clear before you can cancel it then switch to dagger go up hit that dash up you can hit some objects that's there it's kind of easy large area to hit them so just hit that thing i'm gonna explain the sword part for the next so the sword long range deals slightly more damage than the dagger but yeah i think it has slightly less uh, DPS. It's a very good weapon for the upcoming boss fight, not this wave spawn, but after that. It's not the fastest, but it makes it much easier. But overall, we're mostly using this for the blade beam, the special attack that can deal a little bit of extra damage in a very fast way. So, let's show this. First, three blade beam takes care of them. Oh, I want to switch the knife before. I was. Something like that, it wasn't the cleanest, but yeah, you see you have a lot of area remaining after before this. So another thing to go over this area, for some reason you can see these enemies, especially on the way down afterward. I don't think they can trigger before this fight, but only after and some of the enemies turning to this. These are a range enemies. Normally they're not supposed to exist on easy difficulty, but for some reason they do after you have done that battle, or when you trigger the battle. When you have triggered this wave spot, they can start turning into this. These are faster and the not even more man, they are faster and more aggressive kind enemies, but they only exist in this area on easy difficult, so we don't really have to care about that. Yeah, we go down just like this, fast way down. Start through this, hit that in the middle to trigger this around. When you see this match up, you can teleport up. I missed it again. Oh, again, but I missed it. Uh, so Another wave spawn before a boss this time. I messed up, so I take it a bit slow. This boss is gonna, after a while, always go to that position so you can prepare. This boss can be very annoying to deal with. So you see, these teleports are not random though, it's based on your position. So if you can get like this in the end there, I got a lot of good hits and good damage boosts. That's why you kind of want to try and get. So let's try this one more time. This one of the most difficult boss fights to do really fast. You probably won't lose too many rounds to this because you don't die, but you're probably going to lose time to it. Or maybe gain time as you get better. Not like I do good fights either here, really. I found this probably the hardest fight, but yeah. Always goes there. Get some hits. Something like that. That was quite quite good. Can be a lot better. You see those teleports too from that boss. Those are not really random, but they depend on your position related to how the boss is and the center. So depending on how you're positioning, you can kind of control how the boss teleports. Additionally, the attacks the boss has. So while the time delay before it teleports to those two teleports are random. Not random, I mean. It's fixed timing. Which attack the boss does it has. It can rain fire, it can send those smaller projectiles or larger projectiles out. And it seems to be random which one it goes for. Yeah, let's move on. So, teleport over here. We're heading to the swamp area. We're just gonna go over this. Doesn't slow down our speed so much if we go over this lily pad. For some reason, we can walk along this top side, so it saves time doing that. Coming up here is one of the biggest skips, the swamp skip. Normally, you're intended to go there. So, we're heading up here, which is supposed to be the exit way. We're gonna do some dashes here, then fire a teleport down and use the respawn glyphs to respawn on the other side. The thing about the respawn is it's dependent on the camera and we fire the this the teleport dagger, yeah, the camera lags behind and we need the camera to catch up because where, which side we're gonna teleport is dependent on where the camera is. So you can't wait too long after you do the fire dash until you get to do this teleport. It's not difficult, but sometimes when you feel you want to try and do this safe, you mess up even more. So. The kind of thing that's not difficult, but it's easy to mess up. Could be fine, yeah. And you take one hit. It's 
possible good hit again, but yeah, it shouldn't happen. But it's not too difficult to get. Just yeah, don't try and take it too safe. It's kind of like the rule of thumb for it. But yes, yeah, hitting here, we're gonna dash once, teleport down to that, teleport again to that, and dash twice, and then take a respawn here, and it spawns us there. We can just teleport over, pick up this. Now here we oh, want to equip the air trinket. I prefer to equip these on these slots so I can equip the air trinket fast because I don't I I do both these when I have free time or so. Something like that, then we can just head out here. Yes, out there is a respawn glitch in this corner here if you unequip it, unequip the air trinket that can spawn you down here. It takes a little bit of time because one more help and there's no help pick up here. So I don't really see it being worth it. Especially since the upcoming boss is very difficult. It's probably the most difficult boss. You can do... Oh, I missed it. You don't want to take damage here. But yeah, you can teleport after that guy. It's one of the trickier teleports. At least I find it to be. And sometimes you hit the blob too. But yeah, here is the swamp boss. This is one of the most annoying bosses and difficult bosses. And probably where runs go to die. Especially since we're low on health. And this thing has some really annoying thing which I don't fully understand with the start. Sometimes it seems to be random. There is going to show up a mark before the boss show up and then the boss is going to show up on the ground. And the time from when I hit it till the mark show up and the time from when the mark show up until the boss actually shows up seems to be random in some way. Additionally the third phase of the boss will stop and it seems Sometimes just randomly decide when to stop. Sometimes he keeps on attacking like a full face and sometimes he stops early. And earlier I tr ran, I tried to control this by doing a attack over it. But this, sometimes it seems to be consistent, sometimes it's not. Additionally, it's possible to have that first phase cancelled before the boss even becomes an active hitbox. So it's a bit tricky to or random. Additionally, we're gonna try to get a fast kill on this, which is gonna require us to hopefully get seven hits with the dagger to get in the first phase which is gonna be just enough before the boss trigger the first heat drop phase. If you just get six or five it's still possible to get the two cycle but it's much more difficult. Yeah gonna try and do this with the strat I do now. I just wait here for the boss to show up. Yeah you see it takes ages. Then I dash through it. This gives me time to hit that small thing. There's blobs, because there's the blobs that's really scary. So I got six, I got seven hits. Oh, how did I miss that? Otherwise it was a really good fight. Yeah, I want to do that where I try to get that blob to follow along that line. Only got six hits. Equip the sword, destroy that thing. Now I want it, so for the six hits, I want to. Oh, I didn't get the final hit, but I won't need to have one additional hit for that to work. So, for this, it would be three cycle. And it's possible to use those special attacks to get extra hits. If you fire those, you can fire those since you can fire it before the boss fight, so it goes along and hits on the way back. Let's see if we can get a two cycle with a seven hit. Oh, I didn't destroy the box. Now we see it cancelled early. Yeah, there's. I only got a few hits because I didn't destroy a small blob. That thing can happen. Seven hits. Now I should be set up for the. Yeah, and the reason this work, why you want seven hits and this works is because you deal just enough damage so that the second heat drop triggers one hit earlier with the cleaver. That's only possible if you use the dagger to hit. And that means I get a double damage boost on the final cleaver hit and deal enough damage to take it out without having to use any extra special attacks. So if you can get that hit, that's the perfect boss fight. It's very difficult to get it to cycle. Three cycle is perfectly fine in a run. I have never gotten it to cycle in a full run, so it's 
to go down here. You can teleport to that thing. It gets stuck in the wall actually. So if I press something, I just get shut up. You can try and use this to get some boost momentum, but I haven't really been successful with that. There is a trinket that boots the heat drop. I haven't used it much, but it could be useful to get extra damage boosts. I'm not sure. Maybe for the final wave spawn, it can get more damage boosts. I'm not sure. So the dark maze here though. It's not that as bad as the sound. The first one you can take either way around here. Just gonna head up here. So this is top right. Next is top left right above here, but we have to take this turn around. So and there's an enemy there we can teleport. Saves a bit of time. Same save uh, top left. Have to take slightly extra turns just. Similar, there's an enemy, it's positioned more to the top this time. Now it's top right, and there's three stairs, or yeah, two stairs like that. There's an enemy there, I can teleport, and then one of reaching upstairs. So, I want to, don't take, you can take this route, but that enemy can be annoying. So I prefer to take this route, it's gonna trigger wave spawn. Just teleport to that, hit that thing, teleport down, hit that thing, teleport up and hit. Very quick. On higher difficult, there's more spawns, and there's ways to skip this, including teleporting up using this guy to skip the way, and there's an outer bound glitch too, but it's not worth it for each difficulty. Now it's on bottom right, the exit, and we have to take around and There's an enemy here, so make sure you have stamina to dodge that guy. Additionally, there is a clip like that, but it doesn't save any time, it actually loses time, because going around here, and then going down here is faster, I think at least. Yeah. Exit right here. Here you can pick extra health if you need. Right, it's not possible to actually... The invisible wall extends, so it's can't really use any teleport to save time here. Or you could do something like that to save a bit of time. But don't dash into this room, because we have to stop. You can watch that thing to see where it could go up. going to get a slowdown here. I'm coming up on the next boss. I'm gonna move into that corner first to try and manipulate the boss to go where I want it to go. Then I dash through it and then I try to push the boss into the corner. Once I got in the corner I can try to just swing it with the cleaver for a lot of damage. Something like that. Try and do this again. I kinda want to use uh, the sword or the Dagger for the first hits, even if it cleaver would be faster. Because it can be very difficult to get the boss in position correctly, but if you do it correct, you can actually stop it from going into multiple phases too. That's a really good fight like that. It's consistent if you do it, so it's a good strat. Additionally, for this, when you pick up the energy, if you don't mash base, you have to time it. Because if you mash it, you're gonna waste stamina without any dashes coming up. And try and show that off on the next boss. Now we are setting out on this right, but you just teleport there. You have to you have to move up afterwards, so it's important to know. Theoretically, there could be skip if you can get through this wall and skip this maze area. But so far, there's nothing to teleport in there, so no skip for this area. So, the ice area coming up, there's gonna be another major skip. I'm gonna skip the entire normal area here too, as well as for this one. So, equip this sword and destroy that guy because it's away. Then just walk up here and stand. That guy is gonna move closer to you while firing. And he can't hit you when you stand there for some reason. The wall of top walls always extend out for some reason with hitboxes. Once he's like that, you can move down. And if you stand on this side, he's gonna fire himself down closer to the wall. You can hit him and teleport through. This is much easier than the first skip to say to so something like it. You may be able to use the cleaver special attack and move this guy closer fast, but remember this wall can be annoying and be in the way, so Oh no, I'm not sure I can get this. You miss too much that can die, but this hit barely does any damage at all, so usually save. You can, don't hit that before you can take that on the way down. But that's good to know, it. you can't need to move out bitter sensor. So immediately, it's the frost boss. So just go up, hit this, this guy. We're just gonna try and hit this guy as much as possible. 
I didn't want you to pick up those drops before. It's possible to kill him before he triggers that second phase. But yeah, I mean, depends a lot to show at the end. So, this boss does not have an iframe at all. You can always hit him after he spawned in. And it's just gonna stand there, he has no hitbox, then it goes into his bounce phase where he tries to bounce. Optimally, you want him to bounce like just right up and down. When he does that, you want to, first you want to just hit him. When he does that, you switch to the sword and just fire sword beams at him. Afterward, you want to switch back to this, teleport back to him, then switch to the cleaver and try to hit him. And optimally, you have like me where I picked up when after I teleport, so the sword beams drop the heat, so I picked them up as I start immediately with the cleaver and just get damage boost as, as much as possible. And if done perfectly, you can ignore the second phase when it blows you off. If it does that, it's often better to just take, to get knocked off and teleport back to him and hit him again. So, oh, to try and show this again. Oh, this was bad. I didn't get to teleport. Still, as you see, I don't lose my time you can you could use the sword beam too to final finish him off this fight is by far the easiest you probably don't lose too much time like i didn't lose much time over having a not go for the wind attack so it's kind it's the easiest boss and right I dashed earlier there i lost stamina but i didn't get rid of this menu menu because i pressed space too early so you want to time it after you see this you see this text fade in and then just dash down Two dash down, and you're gonna hit that perfectly. Now we're off to the final section of this run. Let's run into this. Oh. This dash up, teleport there, the box. One up, two diagonally, one to the side. Then teleport to that. Don't dash too early because then you're gonna land inside that hitbox. Teleport up and immediately dash. Oh, a double dash, I lost. If I got hit, doesn't really matter if I get hit, it just costs time. Switch to the cleaver and do two special attack and two hits. And he's down. That's twice, don't dash again because then you get too far. Pick up that thing before you go. Hit this thing for safety, you don't have to. It's a bit slow. If you do that first, you are actually too fast and run out of stamina for the dagger if you do it perfectly. So you had to pick up the first and last of those boosts, extra stamina boost. Otherwise, you're gonna not have enough stamina for the last shot. If you make any mistakes, then you don't need to pick up the first and the last. So another one of these rooms is teleport update, and now we're off to the final section of wave spawn and boss fight. So for this, we're gonna try to chain chain the damage boost as much as possible, so... Oh, I made a mistake and dropped it. Oh! And I missed it, so... Back to early, so I missed. don't really have a... After the first one I tried to keep a order of how I do them. But after that I don't just go with what I learn where the enemies are located. Oh! Manage your resources. This one has one of those snakes. It's random when the first stop phase is. Looks like it's about to stop so... It's always good to hit that thing. It doesn't take many hits to kill but whenever it has its stop phase it's best to kill it as soon as possible. You can use the sword beam to finish off, and then just be close to the sand. If you mash base, you can avoid that hit sometimes. Sometimes it still hits you, but I think I was too late, so the risk of me dying here is quite big. Should be safe. It's possible to hit this, kill that boss inside that face. So I did, but it wasn't good. Oh, I didn't get help pick up, so... Okay, let's do this again. And I always forget that. Mash base before this boss fight. That thing just sort of just random knockback. That can happen.
Just hit this boss. It's not too difficult. If normally you won't be too damaged after the first phase, so and try and show this one more time because it's gonna enter the third phase after this and the third phase is an absolute joke so like that now I missed the attack it didn't take damage and that also means right this I'm close to it oh this is so bad I'm It's not difficult, boss fight on easy difficult at all. But yeah, it's very easy to make some mistakes. You want to hit the attack there for the sword is good. But just run in this with the cleaver and hit this thing. I'm not gonna get the perfect fight. So, one more time. It's possible to kill that boss by just running it and hitting with the cleaver before it even gets to its first attack. And that's true for all, for all difficulties. So you can do that on the hardest difficulty. Mr. Mash. It should be. No, I didn't get before that hit, but alright. Can dodge many of these attacks. As you can see, this, this final phase does a bit of combination of all the earlier phases. And if I kill this boss so far away, I probably can't get the fast, the no attack on this, which. Means I'm gonna have a bit of stun, but yeah, it doesn't matter unless you're low on health. And then for the final, you just wanna dash in the middle. That's the game. Yeah, so one more thing to note about the game just after cutscene is that deaths and quits the menu does not count for the in game tower timer. It saves on a checkpoint and it loads the time for that, so this run was much longer than 20 minutes and 30 seconds, as you're gonna see on the video time. But yeah, the in-game time isn't correct unless you have deathless. So showing the end screen to see if it deathless means we can have the in-game time. It seems to be accurate. I notice I always had 21 seconds slower for runs. Yep, yeah, that's the Scylla. Hope you enjoyed the game.